Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at the user function in Power Apps and you might say well that's a bit of a boring topic um, you know everybody is probably the first function in Power Apps that everybody uses. The problem is it's a uh, user function is a little bit of a liar and it's not telling you the full truth and if you're not aware of what it's lying to you about you might pull your hair out and uh, I've obviously been through that exercise and I'm trying to save you having to go through that. So let me show you what I mean. So this is a very basic power app and in here I've got a label and I'm about to pick one of these options that the user function presents me with. So from here I can go and choose the email, the full name or the image of the user that's currently logged in. Before I do I want to show you in Outlook, or well, this is Outlook on the web, but it works very similar on uh, in Outlook in, uh, in an installed version of Outlook. But if you have a, a user in your to field in Outlook and you double click on that, this is a fictitious user by the way, and uh, if we go into overview or contact, the same info, but you'll see that in this case this user's email address in and his chat address is not the same. Now the chat address is actually more significant than what you might think because that uses the user principal name or in other words the actual login name for this user and in this case his email address and his login address or his login or account address isn't the same and there are a lot of articles out there that really recommend that you do keep these the same but sometimes that is not possible and uh, it's for those cases that I want to want to do this video. So going back into Power Apps, if we now go and select um, the email for this user and we let this run, you'll see that it's returning the login, it's not returning the email. So you might say, well, yeah, that's a bug and Microsoft need to fix it. Problem is they can't because there are millions of apps out there that have now been developed in such a way that this is using the user.email and even though it's returning the UPN I'm sure people have lots of people have workarounds for this implemented and all of these sort of things so they can't go and change what this function returns because then all of these power apps would break so if they want to fix this they'll probably have to release an email v2 or maybe a user v2 or something like that but for the immediate future until they do this is extremely important to take note of for these scenarios all right so there we've got the the email selected and you can clearly see that it's showing you the upn or the the actual login name so how do you get the email address for this user then and how do you how do you now filter data according to the current user. Do you use the email or do you use the UPN? And personally I like to use the UPN because the chances of that changing is, is less than, than using the, um, the email address. But there are some considerations around that as well and we'll do a subsequent vi a video where we deep dive into filtering data according to the, the logged in user because there's a couple of things to keep in mind in that. But if you want to get to the email address, what you can basically do is add the Office 365 connector. And to do that, just by the way, I love this new place where or the new data sources um, view for in Empire Apps, it's awesome. Um, so in here we can go and say choose the Office 365 connector and add that to the Power App. Right, so that's added. We can add another label to use that and that's also going to give you a little bit of a hint to show you that the, the email or the user email function is not correct. So if we call the Office 365 users and we want to first of all use my profile v2. In general I like to use the v2s typically there's, there's more functionality in them. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on that for now, but just the, so that you are aware of that. And now we can go and select the mail function. Take note, it's not email in context of the, the Office 365 users, it's just mail. All right, so there we now have the email function, or the, the actual email address for this user, and this is now what we were looking for, and that's grand. 
just to show you if I copy this label and um, I go into the options that's available to me you'll see one of the options is the user principal name and this is now what's going to correspond with the user.email that we use, use natively in Power Apps. So you'll see that this is absolute proof that unfortunately the user.email function is broken and unfortunately Microsoft won't be able to fix that easily. So this problem is, is here to stay. Right, so now that we've got the 365 users function, all of that is working well, but you probably don't wanna be calling these multiple um, APIs throughout the application the whole time. So just a little hint and what, what works quite well is if you call this um, at startup, so when the app starts up, then you can actually call these functions and write it, in, write it into a variable. So if you go into the app property on the left, the object rather, um, and the on start, you can go and write a small formula that'll cache this detail that's easier for you to use in the future. So to do this, we can go and uh, let's say we're gonna create a variable called var user, and we're gonna set this with a value. We're actually gonna set this with multiple values, and this is a little bit of a, a trick that, uh, that you might use in your apps that, that I find very, very useful, um, where you actually have a, a bit of a hierarchy set up in your variables. So from here we can go and say, first of all, we want to set my profile. So we're going to set a variable called var user, and then we're going to create an object in that uh, variable called my profile. And in there, we're going to return the properties from the Office 365 users. And that's going to be my profile v2. We're going to close that. And this is now going to write the results from this into the my profile section of the var user variable. So let's give that a, a test, shall we? Let's right click on this, run on start. Okay. And let's go and have a look at that variable and see what it looks like. So it's got a record and that's good. And inside the var user, there's a column or a property called my profile. And there's a table inside of that property and this is pretty cool. So this now took all of this and just wrote it into this property inside of that variable. And this is everything that it got from my profile from the Office 365 users. Right, so if you now want to reference that, I'm just going to create a new label. Just going to put it down here. Don't get confused to which one is connected to, to what connector. But if I go and say var user, which is the variable and I do a dot, it's now going to tell me what are you looking for for the var user. And for this, I'm going to say my profile. And then from there, I can easily go and select the property inside of that. And because this is now cached in the variable, I can very easily use it throughout the application, which also, by the way, fixes delegation issues. Um, if you try and reference this value, directly against the data source, but that's more for a, for a second video. All right, so that's now giving me my profile, but in addition to that, just format the text, so we put that in a little bit of a indentation. So let's do that and make it look pretty. So the next value we wanna post or we wanna capture, we might say, we also wanna get a list of my direct reports because in this app, we're using that in multiple time or multiple places. So I can go and call the direct reports. And now you'll see that it's asking me for the ID. And if you go and look at the documentation, it's going to talk about the, the login or the user ID. And because we now know that the user.email is actually returning the user.id, we can use this quite comfortably. So there, we can just go and say, yeah, we know it's not going to give us the email, but in this example, this is exactly what we need. So now it's going to write the answer or the result from the direct reports um, API call into the direct reports object. So it's going to do that. And uh, it's going to move that up a bit just to make it look pretty. Shift enter, then puts it in the right line on the right indentation. 
and let's also now say we want to go and can also get details about um, my manager and to do that we're going to call the office 365 users and there is a manager v2 function and again it's going to ask for the user principal name um, for the actual user to check the manager for so again in this case we're going to just use user dot email and uh, there we go format text to just clean that up nicely and there's the function that I'm not going to call on app start keep in mind that these things are not going to trigger concurrently so it's going to trigger uh, this wait for response then trigger wait for response and then trigger this so that's one of the downfalls of writing it all into one variable um, but it's a very nice way of keeping your app simple and not having th hundreds of variables floating around Right, so what we can do now, let's just quickly run that. Okay, so that takes a second. And now we've got data. So in this one, we're checking my profile email. We cannot create another one and uh, simply go and say, let's connect to my manager. So we can go and say voyuser.myManager. You'll see that it just shows it up as one of the options. And now we can connect to the properties in his object. So let's just go and say um, mail for this example. And then for this fictitious user, my Kent is, is, uh, is this guy's manager. So you can also, if you wanted to, you can connect a gallery to, to the direct reports if you wanted to. So let's go and say add a gallery. This is also new in Power Apps. I love it. Where as soon as you add a gallery, it asks you, well, we know you probably want to connect a data source. Which one do you want to connect? And in this case, we can now go and say, we want to connect this to, well, that new functionality is not going to help me here because I want to connect to the var user dot uh, direct reports. And if you give it that, we can now and go and specify what data we want to specify for the direct reports. Ooh, that's not working. Oh, sorry, it's dot value. We need to the value column for the direct reports is what we want to display in the gallery. And then if we do that, we can now select um, the actual details from here. So let's go worry about the image for now. So let's say there's the mail and then the title might be the display name. All right, so there's now a list of direct reports that I can easily access throughout the application without having to call the Office 365 users um, API multiple times. So I hope you found this useful and I hope that I can uh, save you some frustration with battling with the uh, UPNs and, and email addresses. And uh, if you did find this useful, please comment and like and share and uh, subscribe. And it really helps us to get feedback on these videos. And thanks for watching and have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.